Good morning and warm greetings from Thailand. It's great to be able to share with you this morning and thank you so much, Tim, for the opportunity. I'd like to start by saying a huge thank you to you, Christchurch, our uh, church family, for your love, your staying connected and caring about us as a family and what we're doing, the ministry we're doing here in Thailand. Thank you for messages and greetings and, and uh, various ways that you show that connection through the year. These opportunities to share from God's Word is another way, but also the financial support that the church gives to our ministry here in Thailand means a great deal to us. So thank you very much. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we are uh, excited to see you all in the summer. By God's grace, we are coming to the UK June, July, those couple of months, and we'll be in uh, at church for at least several Sundays, and also in Northern Ireland, and seeing some of our family and friends during those weeks. So we're looking forward to that, looking forward to connecting with those of you that we know and meeting those that we don't know. Uh, it's my privilege to be able to share this morning and, and bring a kind of a break open God's Word around the story that was read in the reading from Genesis 22. And it's a most uh, shocking and remarkable, mind-boggling story of God asking Abraham, this hero of the faith, to sacrifice his son, his only son, on an altar. And not sacrifice as a sort of a figurative idea, but an actual sacrifice was what he asked him to do. And as the story progresses, of course, and, and many of you will know it well, um, God intervenes at the very moment that Abraham is about to take Isaac's life. And an extraordinary statement is made by the angel that speaks from heaven. And he says, uh, now I know that you fear God. Now I know that you fear God. And that's the theme I'd like to speak about this morning is the fear of God or the fear of the Lord. It's a big theme. It's an important theme that comes up often in the scriptures and I felt God stirring that in my heart, uh, especially as 2024 kicked off. And it seemed like God was highlighting something that was significant in my own life. And so I, I felt encouraged and perhaps challenged to share a little bit of that with you as well. I've done some reading. I want to give credit to John Mevere and his book about the fear of the Lord and also Joy Dawson, a couple of authors who I've been reading. And that's been very instructive but also various observations from God's Word. Let's pray before we dive into this. Father God, we thank you so much for the example of your Word. Your Word truly is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us into your purposes, guiding us into how you would have us live and how you want us to uh, position our lives in your world. And we want to ask this morning for revelation of the Spirit in this area of having the fear of the Lord and growing in the fear of the Lord. Many of us would already have some fear of you, but we want to grow more in that area. And so we ask for your uh, understanding and the opening of our eyes, but also for change that would be affected as we go forward from this service. In Jesus' name, amen. So Abraham goes up the mountain with Isaac and he obeys God to the letter, and he takes the most extraordinary step of, uh, of, it looks like, raising the knife and about to plunge it into Isaac and kill him and sacrifice him to God. And then the angel stops him, and it's been a test or an examination of the extent to which Abraham feared God. Now, we have various understandings from the scriptures of what the fear of God is all about, but it's a language or a term that is unfamiliar. I think in our culture, especially increasingly, our culture has become quite flat, egalitarian. There are not many people that we, we really look up to in, in a kind of exalted way, like uh, some cultures would, or perhaps uh, our society in the past would have, where you would have had people bowing low before dukes or lords or kings or princes. That's not something that happens so much anymore in Western culture. And so this concept of having reverence or fear of God 
can get confusing for us. I want to make clear, of course, that the fear of the Lord is not about being afraid of God. Uh, being afraid of God is connected with not knowing much about him, not understanding his character, and being scared of him, running away from him. We see in the Garden of Eden that when Adam and Eve realized they were not clothed and they recognized their sin, they were ashamed and they hid, and they hid from God. And he called to them and he said, Adam, where are you? This was the first time in their relationship that something like that occurred. It was natural for Adam and Eve in their sinful state to want to run away and hide from God. For those of us who have met Christ and have been saved or have given our hearts to God, our lives to God, we do not need to be afraid of him, but we absolutely must have the fear of the Lord. And that's to say, deep reverence that results in action or obedience to who he is and what he says. And we see this in the example of how Abraham takes dead seriously what God said to him. It begins right there at the start of that story in Genesis chapter 2 with God speaking to Abraham and telling him that he wanted him to do that. He says, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. And it says in the next verse, verse 3, early the next morning, Abraham got up, saddled his donkey, took two servants and his son Isaac, cut some wood for the offering, and set out for the place God had told him about. He wasted no time in doing what God had asked. The fear of God is that sense of having deep reverence that would cause us to act quickly and obediently to what God says. Jesus is, of course, our brother. We love Jesus, and we experience through salvation through Jesus the love of God. But a risk for us as those who know about salvation through Jesus Christ is that we would major on the love of God, we would major on it to the exclusion of the fear of God, and the danger would be that we become casual toward him. We become casual towards the things of God. It's almost as though the grace of God is so powerful and strong that I can do my best to be a Christian, but if I fail in some area, at the end of the day, it's no big deal because God loves me so much. Now, there's an element in there that's true. There's an element of truth there that our sins have been atoned for, and God accounts for uh, the grace and the, the love of God is applied to our lives and our hearts, even where we fail and sin. But there must be a fear of God that balances or holds in tension the love of God so that we keep acting in line with how he wants us to be and, and what he wants us to do. And in truth, a healthy understanding of love means we will do what he commands. We will not be casual about our actions or about our life. We will not be disregarding of his holiness because we will always want to please him. In Exodus 20, God makes a, a most powerful statement to the people of Israel, and they had just come out of captivity. They were getting to know God as a people. It was early on in their relationship with him, and they had just come through 400 years of enslavement, during which time they'd been crying out to God. So they probably felt somewhat abandoned, somewhat ignored, but they'd had this mighty breakthrough They'd come across the Red Sea. And then up the mountain, Moses receives the Ten Commandments. And the first commandment sets the parameter for how God would relate to his people. He says in verse 3 of Exodus 20, You shall have no other gods before me or besides me. You will have no other gods. This is really the cornerstone of the fear of the Lord is he is the only one, he's the only God, and he must be treated as such. He must be treated as far above any other respected entity or important priority in our lives. 
Well, what are some marks or indicators that we are lacking the fear of God? And I had in my own life some warning signs last year. In the course of the year, various interactions I had with different people, I had some warning signs that I was lacking the fear of God in my own life. Or at least I didn't have as much of the fear of God as I thought I had. And so I've been thinking about this, and here are some of my observations, some that I've read and received from others, but some from my own experience. The first one is, a hallmark of the lack of the fear of the Lord is a casual drift towards sinful behavior, that over time we become less concerned about some things that are displeasing to God, but that we're sort of tolerating, we're putting up with it, because the fear of God is not acting as powerfully within us. Another would be only obeying God or even other authorities. For instance, the, the input of the vicar or the pastor, Christian leader in our lives, only obeying or responding to that when we agree with it, when it suits. Now, I'm not proposing that we should have lots of people lording it over us, but there is a place that the scripture teaches spiritual leaders should have in our lives. And there's certainly a very high place that God as Lord of our lives should have and does have. But if we only obey him or we only take seriously what Tim, Reverend Tim says when it suits us or when we like what he says, we are casual regarding our fear of the Lord. We are in a kind of a pick and mix scenario where we think, well, I'll take that bit, but there's other bits I don't like. Another hallmark of our uh, indicating a lack of the fear of the Lord would be a strong appetite for pleasure and the things of the world. Now, there are many things that are pleasurable that aren't necessarily evil, but having a strong appetite for those things that far outweighs our appetite for God's word or for prayer, or for Christian fellowship, is a clear warning sign that there is drift in our hearts. Another would be being readily drawn into unbelief about what Scripture teaches, or what God says, or what God is prompting. Unbelief, that we have a, a quick reflex that says, ah, I think that's probably not true, or I don't think that's relevant. Maybe hearing of some miracle or something that has occurred in the life of someone else and dismissing it very easily, not taking uh, seriously that God might be at work there. And I will add to that that the Lord's Prayer starts by saying, Our Father in Heaven, it's, it's aligning ourselves with that relationship, hallowed be your name. Your name is holy. It's, it's acknowledging his lordship, his fatherhood, and that he is holy, right as we start that prayer. Another mark of, uh, of a lack of the fear of the Lord would be cynicism or negativity of spirit. And by that I mean uh, a kind of a weariness or an, an excessive negativity that builds up over time that causes us to not have a hope-filled view of life and of the future because we are not those without hope we have hope we are the people of god and so if you find yourself negative a lot of the time perhaps there's some work god wants to do in regard to increasing fear of god in your life another couple of indicators one would be a lack of hunger for god's word i kind of touched on that and then a final one fear of man being more concerned about what other people think uh, intimidated by their views and their priorities, and uh, people-pleasing, kind of doing what they want instead of doing what God wants. Well, how about the opposite side? What are some indicators of the fear of the Lord? There's a whole bunch of them in Scripture. I, I, one of the books I was looking at listed almost 40 different benefits or indicators of the fear of God in our lives. I'll just draw out a few. One is I think the beautiful picture in the harrowing moments of the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus says to his father, I'd like to not go to the cross if possible. Is there any other way we can do this? But 
uh, greater than that desire, I want to do your will. And so if it's your will that I go to the cross, I'll go to the cross. That's a beautiful picture of the fear of the Lord that was in Jesus. The scripture says clearly that Jesus walked in the fear of the Lord. He himself, our Savior, had a reverence for his Father. Another mark or reward of the fear of the Lord is joy in obeying Jesus, that we would be joy-filled by obedience to him. Isaiah 62, uh, 66 verse 2 says, These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. There's something there about the effect of the fear of the Lord that we would take deadly seriously what God's word says, that we would tremble at his word. Do you tremble at God's word? I felt convicted preparing this message that I, I'm not sure I tremble at God's word enough. There's some bits I do take seriously and, and they cause me to trem tremble inwardly, but they're great swathes of scripture that I don't allow it to have that kind of impact on me. Another fruit of the fear of the Lord is hatred of sin. And the world and the day and age in which we are living, that where there is increasingly prolific sin all around us, we must be those who are clear about what sin is and have a strong hatred of it. Proverbs 14, 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. I, I want a fountain of life in me. I believe you would want a fountain of life in you. Well, the way to have that fountain of life is for us to cultivate the fear of the Lord in our own lives. Psalm 111.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That statement is repeated multiple times in the scriptures. If you want to walk in wisdom and have wisdom, uh, develop or cultivate or grow in the fear of the Lord. And then Psalm 25, a beautiful statement says, the friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and he makes known to them his covenant or his secrets. Psalm 25, 14. The friendship of the Lord is, with those, is for those who fear him and he makes known to them his covenant. Well, those are some of the marks of what it looks like to be walking in the fear of the Lord. And so then the question arises in my heart, if I see some lack of fear of the Lord in myself and I desire to walk in the fear of the Lord, I desire to have some of that intimacy with God where I, I get, he shares his secrets with me. How do I grow in the fear of the Lord? How do I increase it or cultivate it more in my life? Well, I want to share uh, four really simple keys that I believe God gives us in the scriptures. The first one is in Proverbs 1, 27. It says that we must choose the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1, 27. Let me read this verse for us. It's actually verse 29, forgive me. Uh, Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. That's making clear there is something about choice. There's a part that we must play to choose. I will fear the Lord. That will be my disposition towards God. A second is Proverbs 2, 1 to 5, and it's a longer passage, so I won't read the whole thing, but this is this encouraged me so much when I read it. It essentially says, as we cry out for discernment and we cry out for understanding, in so doing, we will receive the fear of the Lord. So there's something there about passionately praying and asking God earnestly, Give me discernment, Lord. Give me understanding. 
so that I will have the fear of the Lord. I've been doing that regularly over the last few weeks, or several times over the last few weeks, and I have felt an increase of the fear of God in my own life. There have been moments where I've, I've sensed the prompting or the, or the hesitation, the, the, um, the sort of blocking of the Spirit about something that I was going to say or think or do. I think that's the fear of the Lord having an impact even on my own behavior. So Proverbs 2 is saying we must cry out for it. We must cry out for discernment and understanding. A third way we grow in the fear of the Lord is by reverent submission. Hebrews 5 talks about Jesus' prayers were heard because of his reverent submission. He himself learned obedience to the Father and had reverent submission. I think reverent submission is another it's a, it's a sort of a synonym for fear of the Lord. You have an awe of him and submit to him. And then finally, a fourth is Deuteronomy 5.29. Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. That it might be well with them and with their children forever. Oh, that they had such a heart that would fear me. I believe God's longing is that we would walk in fear of him. And so there is, a, again, a choice of our hearts to choose to fear him and also to teach that to our children and our children's children. I want to stop there. There's so much more that we could say about the fear of the Lord. But in essence, I believe that it's through a process of making Jesus Lord of every part of our lives that we walk in the fear of the Lord. It's allowing him to call the shots. It's submitting my will, our will, to him and obeying and following whatever he says and however he leads. I want to encourage you in response to this message to cry out to God for discernment and understanding and the fear of the Lord in your own life. Cry out. Go somewhere private in your house or take a walk and raise your voice and, and ask him for more of the fear of the Lord. But also, let's take a moment of silence as we pray to honor and reverence God in our hearts. Our Father, we would ask that in the name of Jesus, you would fill every single one of us with a greater fear and reverence for, of you. And we pray that we would have more moments of silence where we pause the music, we pause the talking, we pause the, the rushing of our thoughts and our agenda. And we just stand or sit or kneel in the presence of a holy God. And I ask your blessing upon my brothers and sisters at Christ Church Bushmead to grow in that cultivation and that receiving of the fear of the Lord in each one of our lives. We ask these things by the power of the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.